Welcome to our lecture online. Our next problem dealing with capillary action is two tubes, one inside the other. And notice that the inside radius of the inner tube is 0.5 millimeters. The outside radius of the inner tube is 1.0 millimeters, which is the inside portion of the second tube. And then we can see that the radius to the outer wall of the outside or I should say the inner wall of the outside tube is 1.25 millimeters. So it's 0.25 millimeters in between those two tubes. And here we have a radius of 0.5 millimeters. Now we're told that we have a liquid in there which has specific gravity or density of 0.8 grams per cubic centimeter. They tell us there's a contact angle of 10 degrees. And we're told that the height of the capillary action on the inside tube is equal to 1.2 centimeters. They want us to find the height of the capillary action between the two tubes, so in the outside tube, so to speak. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, we need to know that the force drawing the liquid up is going to be equal to the, what we call the uh, surface tension constant, the length of contact times the cosine of the angle. So that's the force drawing the liquid up. Then the weight of the liquid on the inside tube, the weight of the liquid on the inside tube is going to be equal to, well, it's going to be equal to the m times g, which is equal to the rho vg. And then the volume is going to be the area of the base times the height. So that's going to be equal to the density times pi r squared times the h. So this here is the volume of the liquid drawn on the inside tube times g. And of course, at equilibrium, those two will be equal to each other. So the force will be equal to the weight of the liquid inside. So let's set those two equal to each other. So what we then find is that the surface tension times the length of contact times the cosine of theta is going to be equal to the density times pi r squared times h times g. Now what don't we know? Notice we know the radius, we know the density, we know the height, we know g, we know the angle, we know the length of contact, we can figure that out. What we don't know is the surface tension con uh, constant, so we have to figure that out. So we can say that the surface uh, tension is equal to the density times pi r squared times h times g, all divided by L times the cosine of theta. Now what is the contact length? That's going to be the circumference of the inside diameter, which would be 2 pi r. This would be the same r as that. So we have the surface tension is equal to density times pi r squared hg divided by 2 pi r times the cosine of theta. Now notice the pi's cancel and one of the r's cancel. All we have to do now is plug in the numbers in CGS units. The density 0.8 r that would be the radius converted to centimeters, which is 0.05. The height was 1.2 centimeters, and g would be 980, all divided by 2 times the cosine of 10 degrees. And that gives us the surface tension of that particular liquid, the unknown liquid. So 0.8 times 0.05 times 1.2 times 980. Divide by 2, divide by the cosine of 10, equals 23.88 dan centimeters. So it would be 22, did I say that right? 23.88, 23.88, dyne times centimeters. Dines times centimeters. All right, so now we have the constant for the liquid. Now what we need to do is figure out what the height will be in this tube. So we'll take the same equation, but now we'll solve it for h. So we can say that the height, h, is equal to, well, we've got to be careful here, because hmm, the volume inside is going to be slightly different. So let's be careful here. When we calculate the volume inside, let's do that here. So we have the weight of the liquid inside is going to be mg, is going to be rho vg, which is going to be the density times here. What we have to do 
is take the outside volume minus the inside volume. So that's going to be equal to the area of the base, which is pi times the outside radius, which is in converted to centimeters. That would be um, 0 0.125 squared. That's pi r squared for the outside minus pi r squared for the inside, which is going to be 0 0.1 quantity squared. So this here is going to be the surface area of the liquid between, between the outside wall of the inner tube and the inside wall of the outer tube. It's the best way to explain it. So density times the area times the height, which would be H, which is what we're going to be looking for, times G. So here's the weight of the liquid. And we're going to calculate it like that. And we're going to set that equal to this constant this force right here so let's do that instead so force equals the weight and the force is going to be the surface tension times the length now the length is going to be the length of the outside and the length of the inside so it's going to be 2 pi r 2 pi times the outside radius which is going to be 0 0.125 plus is going to be 2 pi times the inside radius, which is 0 0.1. So this is going to be the length of contact. The length of contact is going to be the length of this circumference and the length of this circumference. And the liquid is going to be in between those two. So that's how we find the length of contact. And we multiply that times the cosine of 10 degrees. Cosine of 10 degrees. Let's put a line here so we don't get confused. And we're going to set that equal to the weight of the liquid, which is going to be density times pi. And we can, uh, we can factor out a pi that's going to be equal to 0 0.125 squared minus 0 0.1 squared, like that, times h times g. OK. So it's going to be this, which is the force, equal to the weight of the liquid. And what we're trying to find is we're trying to find the height. So the height is going to be equal to the surface tension, which we found somewhere right here, which is 23.88. Multiply that times, I can factor out a 2 pi, and multiply that times 0 0.125 plus 0 0.1 times the cosine of 10 degrees. So we have h is equal to this divided by what's remaining. And what's remaining is going to be the density times pi times 0 0.125 squared minus 0 0.1 squared times g. And that will give us the height. So let's plug in everything else that we know. But first of all, the pi's cancel out. And so this is going to be equal to 23.88 times 2 times the sum of these two, which is 0 0.225. Multiply times the cosine of 10 degrees, all divided by the density, which is 0 0.8, times 0 0.125 squared minus 0 0.1 squared times 980. And so finally, we now have an equation that we can calculate for the height of the liquid between the two pipes, between the outside of the inside pipe and the inside of the outside pipe. And so what do we get? Starting with the denominator, 0.125 squared minus 0.1 squared equals times 0.8 times 980 equals. Take the inverse. K times 23.88 times 2 times 0.225 times, take the cosine of 10, equals, and we get 2.4 centimeters for the total height between the two pipes. Now notice it was only 1.2 centimeters on the inside tube, and it's double that in between the two tubes. And that's how we do that. A little bit messy, but it can be done if we take very careful note of what variables and constants we're using. And that's how it's done.